All right, what is going on everyone? It is video number three, day three, which means we're talking about tuning the ignition timing, auto-tuning the ignition timing with Copilot. So let me start this video off by saying this is the chance, the time that you can really do some damage to your engine. If you increase your ignition timing too much and cause your engine to knock, you could do all sorts of damage. This is the warning, just be really careful with this. If you don't know what you're doing, don't even attempt to do it. And as I said in the first video, if you break something, I'm not responsible. So just don't. All right, getting right into this. So ignition timing is a little bit different than fuel, obviously. But in terms of the auto tuning of them, there is quite a bit of a difference. For fueling, we have this target AFR map that we need to either add or remove fuel based on the target air fuel ratio. With ignition timing, we don't have anything like that. We have a sensor on the car that is reading more or less vibration, noise, sound from the engine. And it is interpreting that as knock. What is knock? Well, knock goes by a couple different names. Knock, ping, detonation. Detonation, I guess, would be the technical term where the gasoline or whatever form of fuel you're using detonate, explodes before it is supposed to. And when it does that, it causes problems. It causes excess vibration. Um, it causes a noise, a pinging noise, a knock in the engine. Now that we know what knock is, we need to understand how it can occur in terms of tuning. And with this, we need to understand the spark and ignition timing in relation to the conditions that um, I guess detonation can occur. So ignition timing or the spark occurs so many degrees either before or after top dead center when the piston is at its highest point. Well, because the way gasoline or whatever fuel you're using burns and atomizes and everything, it doesn't create the most amount of power when it fires at that top dead point. So when it comes to engine tuning, what we normally look at is firing that spark or setting that ignition timing so many degrees before top dead center. That way it allows the fuel to start burning and the explosion to occur just in time for the piston to be going down. But in certain cases, in certain instances, a couple things can occur. Number one, if the ignition timing is too advanced and it fires and the explosion occurs before your piston is at that top dead center point, well, it could potentially cause some problems, as you would expect. That piston is still trying to go up like this, and instead the explosion is trying to force it down. So imagine piston going up, explosion trying to force it back down, while the piston is still trying to go back up. It doesn't work. So that can cause all kinds of problems with bent rods, rods breaking, going outside of the engine. You get the point. That's where we're talking about the danger of this, where you can potentially cause some serious problems. The other type of knock that can occur, other than that ignition happening at too advanced of a time, is when certain conditions are met that are considered bad for the engine. It's too hot, the fuel is a bad low octane rating, it's just bad fuel, and there's any other number of potential issues that could occur that can cause knock. But at least for our situation, our scenario here with this tuning, we really only need to worry about the ignition timing. We're not messing with any of the other items at this point. We're just worrying about the ignition timing, either advancing or retarding as we need. Which brings me to the next thing. What is ignition advance and ignition retard? Well, I kind of explained the top dead center portion of this and how the air fuel mixture is normally detonated by the spark so many degrees before that top dead center. Well, let's just say for all intents and purposes, we wanna have that spark go 15 degrees before top dead center. 
okay? Well, if we're tuning this and we notice true knock occurring at that 15 degrees, we may want to go ahead and retard timing a little bit. So now instead of 15 degrees, we do 14 degrees or even 13 degrees. And now we recognize that we're no longer knocking. But let's say on the opposite side of that, we don't have any knocking whatsoever. And we want to create a little bit more power. So instead of retarding it, we're going to go ahead and advance the ignition timing further. So instead of 15 degrees, let's go 16, 17 degrees. And at that point, well, assuming the combustion occurs at the proper time, right when the piston is about to go down, it will force the piston down at a better time and create more power, better power, without any issues. And that's really the end goal of this. We want to create the most amount of power without any problems. No knocking, no detonation, nothing. So let's look at now how Copilot goes about doing this. Similar to the fueling, we collect samples and we log the ignition timing and we want to log all the knock that occurs. And we need a way to tell if that knock is true knock or if it's false or insignificant knock. That insignificant or false knock is going to be ignored, but we want to make sure it picks up on all of the real true knock. And with that, we then set a threshold of this knock. So looking at Copilot, we're going to go ahead and look at the current ignition table. So this is the table that has the ignition timing that we are attempting to hit for every single load cell. As you go up, it normally retards ignition timing further. So up here, we have 30 degrees of ignition advance all the way up to in the low load areas up to 49 degrees of ignition advance that's quite a bit but the low load areas that is still relatively safe at least for this engine your engine may be completely different and if you are running any sort of boost you're gonna have much lower ignition times also so now that we can see the current ignition times and we start logging these ignition times we're gonna start picking up these samples these samples are again, as you hit a load cell, as you're driving, you're going to start collecting the ignition that is logged. Okay. So again, this is trying to hit all of the cells in the ignition table here. Assuming it starts collecting enough of these samples and you're logging the ignition timing as you're expected, you're going to start logging knock as well. And the more you drive, the harder you drive, the different situations you get into based on load value, based on temperature, everything, you're going to start seeing variances in the ignition timing. And as you start driving and it starts to log all of these samples and the logged ignition time or the log knock, you're expecting it to start making changes or updates to the ignition map. But just like tuning the air fuel ratio and the fuel trims, we need to go ahead and enable it. So in order to do that on the setup tab, down here at the bottom, we have the online auto-tune ignition timing, and we have a few checkboxes we can select. So first off, in order to enable it, you have this box that says auto-tune ignition timing. Just hitting that will technically turn on and enable auto-tuning of the ignition timing. But right off the bat, all it will do is retard timing. It will not perform any ignition advance at all. Before you even enable the auto-tune ignition timing, you want to make sure you set the medium and high knock thresholds. If you don't, and let's say you have a noisy engine that makes a lot of what would be considered knock, even though it's false knock, this may take that and consider it to be false knock and start basically retarding your ignition timing all over the place, and you could end up with a very bad crappy map that doesn't give you a whole lot of power or just ruin your tune altogether. So based on your engine and your knock sensor, you need to specify what's considered medium knock and high knock. So with this, there's going to be some stock values in here. You're going to need to specify what yours are. And I say this because, so let's say you turn on the ignition timing with the stock values. And if 40 is a low knock threshold for you, but it starts registering that, well, it could start just retarding your ignition timing all over the place, which you don't want. So we need to make sure this medium and high knock threshold are set properly. 
Assuming they're set properly, and you turn on the auto-tune ignition timing, if we go to the ignition map and we start logging everything, well, as long as you're not meeting those knock thresholds, it will not retard your ignition timing at all. But as you can guess, this is also only half of the picture. When it's retarding ignition timing, it's making your map more safe, but we're not creating or we're not adding any power. We're not making any more power with your car. And that's ultimately what we want to do when we're tuning the vehicle. We want more power. We want safe power, but we want more power. So what do we need to do with that? Well, we have this checkbox down here that is allow ignition advance. This is where things get scary and tricky because once you do that allow ignition advance, it will start increasing or advancing your ignition timing as you drive. So how is this going to work? Well, assuming your PFC isn't registering any knock, it will slowly start increasing ignition timing by one degree for each load cell until it starts registering knock. And at that point, it will stop and decrease it by one degree. But unlike fuel trims, we aren't going to have minimum samples. We need to go ahead and specify how many samples we want per cell in this, in this tweaks section. So if we go into tweaks, we can now see how many we want. So let's say number of knock samples per cell to examine, five. So assuming there's five samples per cell, that cell, if it has no knock, it will potentially increase it by one degree. And you can read through all this and figure out the rest. It's pretty self-explanatory and does a pretty good job at explaining it for you. So what else can we talk about? Well, in terms of the auto-tuning ignition timing, there really isn't all that much to it, especially compared to the fuel trims. With this, it's, again, if it has knock that registers in the medium threshold, it will retard ignition by one degree. If it's in the high knock threshold, it'll drop it by two degrees. If it does not register any knock at all, it will go ahead and slowly increase ignition timing by one degree at a time. And that's really all there is to this. And with that, I'm kind of struggling what else to talk about with this auto-tuning of the ignition timing. It's far simpler than fuel, which makes it that much more dangerous, but it's, it's not necessarily complex. It's more of a let Copilot do what it does and just watch it to make sure it doesn't do any crazy modifications. But at that, I think that's going to be the end of this video. And this is really the third and final video where I really go over the auto-tuning. Next video, I'm going to be going over more of the, uh, the advanced features and functions of Copilot. So, I guess next week, stay tuned for that. Otherwise, at this point, 